Here's Brody Brazil. I can tell you it's not often. In fact, it's probably never happened before that I wake up in the morning and my very first thought is the Arizona Coyotes. But such was the case this morning on the heels of a very turbulent last night, which I'll detail and explain in just a second. There is turmoil in Tempe, Arizona regarding the future of this hockey franchise. Will they even remain in the Phoenix metro area? And by the way, I'm recording this here as it happens, mid-May 2023. At this point, I'm not only sympathizing with Coyotes fans, their players, their broadcasters, and staff members of the team. I'm also empathizing, right? Because the Oakland A's, near and dear to my heart, are very much in this similar scenario of uncertainty. It's not fun. It's not pleasant. Things are having these dramatic twists and turns, and I'll spell it all out here, but the bottom line is I feel terrible. I'll give you some of my big picture thoughts on this situation. First off, if you're not up to speed, what exactly happened here? A couple years back, the Coyotes and Glendale, city of Glendale, they had a, a, a rocky history. They did not have a good relationship, and the Coyotes were essentially evicted from Gila River Arena. City said, you know what? We're done with you. This is no longer an option that you even play here. By the way, they've changed the name of that venue since then, Diamond Desert, Desert Diamond Arena, something like that. It's not even full on a regular basis. They literally kicked out a tenant which plays 41-plus home dates per year because of that conflict. I digress. More on that later. But they get evicted from Glendale, which was never a great home for them to begin with. Then, this season, they move into the 5,000-seat Mullet Arena. That's right, Mullet, like... The family who paid for the building, not the haircut. Uh, On the campus of ASU, they built this rink for the ASU hockey team. Well, the Coyotes needed a place to play. The NHL thought, all right, this is a temporary landing spot until you get fully situated in Tempe. And we've already got plans for this new arena, this new entertainment district. That will pass, and this is where you'll play for two to three years in between. Now, the bridge kind of leads to nowhere. And they're on this bridge still, this tiny, tiny bridge at ASU. More on that situation still to come. But the plans for this new arena in Tempe, this has been months in the making, dare I say, more than a year in the making, planning, uh, petitioning, trying to get everything laid out so that the general public knew what was coming. And it came down to this referendum vote and three different propositions, 301, 302, 303, that did not pass last night. Now, they didn't get blown out of the water, but it was also not close. I mean, it wasn't close to the point that the NHL and the Coyotes kind of just conceded before the night was even done, that this is officially not going to happen. Prop 301 was going to amend the city, the city of Tempe's general plan for use of that property, which by the way, 40-something acres is a landfill right now. Prop 302 was going to rezone it, and Prop 303 was going to give the right to the Coyotes to develop the four, there you go, 46 acres for the new arena, an entertainment district, two hotels, and 2,000 residential units. You saw the rendering at the very beginning. I think there's better ones out there, but it, this was going to be a massive project. This was going to be something that I wouldn't say transforms Tempe if you've been there, and I have, by the way, in the last couple months. I swung by the campus of ASU during spring training. It is definitely transforming and growing already on its own. This was only going to add to that momentum. And a lot of people thought that in Tempe, this was kind of a great landing spot because you're near Phoenix, but you're not in Phoenix. You're also next to Scottsdale, where there's a lot of optimism and growth and a good fan base potential there. So you were kind of in the middle of everything centrally located, close to the airport. But the bottom line is all three of these propositions decisively failing. Here's kind of what the problem was in what the Coyotes were asking for. This is likely the sticking point in this referendum vote. And and by the way, when we talk about a public referendum vote, it's not me here telling you that public votes are a bad thing, but this not being decided by the city council proper is probably why it didn't get the fairest shake. Now, I'm not saying all these details here, I'm not saying that I am for or against all of this either. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying when it goes to the public on a, on a complicated project with all these details and things to understand, out of 10 voters who actually voted on this last night and yesterday, 
Did all 10 of them know every single detail? Did they know exactly what they're voting for? Or did they just hear and see headlines and they're voting on that? My, my point is, when you have elected officials, it is their duty to understand what's being proposed and presented and for them to make the most educated decision on it and researched decision on it. And I'm not saying that the general public is not like educated overall. I'm saying that they're not up to speed and educated on what's at hand. So that is the danger when you get into these public referendum votes. Do they actually even understand? Number one, what's the demographic of people showing up to the polls on that day? What else is on the ballot? And also, like I said, how much background does the public have on this project? Which side, yes or no, of anything got to the public the most and the best? But it got confusing here because this was spread around that the Coyotes were asking for $740 million in public value. Now, 500 of it was going to come in the form of property tax relief for up to 30 years. And I don't know specifically if that was to go back and immediately pay for the project, if it was an infrastructure or a, or a tax a financing district, something like that. But there were also $240 million. I wrote 240 again. I keep doing this. I forget to put the M. $240 million in infrastructure costs via taxes. So the Coyotes were asking for hard cash, $240 million, and also tax relief in the form of $500 million. You do that quick math, you get to $740 million. And that is a lot to ask for. There's no two ways about it. And could that money have gone to something else if it's property tax relief? Well, Tempe's not getting it, so nobody's getting it. So Tempe's kind of handcuffed in what they can and can't improve. There, there are just more creative ways to do this. But $740 million in public value was the ask. I will say, in the benefit of the Coyotes, they were offering to pay $73 million in landfill cleanup. That's right. This site, since it's not going to be approved, will currently sit as a landfill. And the Coyote's slogan on this all along was from landfill to legacy and the opportunity to do something good out of something that's completely not in the best shape right now. So this, again, is why things got complicated. It was advertised as privately funded, privately influenced. And the reality is it was going to take a large portion of public money from the city of Tempe, not from Arizona, not from the federal government, from this immediate government and their general fund. So let's go to the big picture thoughts here. This is an awful uncertainty for, like I said, Coyotes fans, number one, their players, number two, and anybody that works in and around the team, number three, employees, staff members, uh, people that work even at, at Mullet Arena, anybody that, that is around this team with employment, this is an awful uncertainty because now you're stuck really in the middle of all this while that Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale, I mean, it's literally used every maybe once a week, if that, maybe three times a month uh, for concerts and events. It just sits empty in Glendale. There is a place that they could play, a landing spot they could be, but too much disagreement, too much headbutting. That's why they're not there. And now relocation beckons, right? Now the Coyotes, as a fan base, have to hear all about Quebec City. They have to hear about Salt Lake City. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very complicated situation. Houston, it's a very complicated situation to be in the middle of. You don't have your future secured. And then there's this other distraction of, well, we'd like to, we'd like to grab onto you too. So I fully understand that. It is not friendly right now. And I feel worst for the fans, like I said, players and staff members too. But, you know, fans in this situation, they have sentiments and memories and they have literally no control over this situation, but they also have everything to lose. And it's already been a tough journey for Coyotes fans in the last, you know, decade plus. We call them the desert dogs and we have a lot of fun with that on the Sharks broadcast. But in our, in our hearts, I mean, there's a special place for the Coyotes and we hope that a non-traditional hockey market like the Phoenix area could grow, could boom, uh, could produce uh, one of the next big stars in coming decades. The Coyotes have also never even really spent like they should. I mean, in the NHL, there's a hard salary cap, but there's also a hard salary floor. And I kid you not, the Coyotes sometimes take on bad contracts just to get to the floor so that they can legally participate as an NHL club. They're not even close to the cap. They are literally having to jump over the floor to be eligible 
as a team. So I, I feel bad for the fans and, and recent trajectory. Okay, I've been to Arizona plenty of times over the years. I've seen all quadrants. I've been to Phoenix. I've been to Tempe. I've been to uh, Glendale, obviously, many occasions. But I've also stayed a lot in Scottsdale. And I'm friends with a lot of people who live in Scottsdale. And I'm here to say I don't know the options. And <laughs> I would hope that somebody in the back of their mind down in Arizona is already considering plan Bs of how do we keep the team in this location. Is Scottsdale an option? Scottsdale to me is always booming and not just in terms of people that visit during spring training, like a lot of times when I do, but I know that it's, it's an affluent area. It could support, you know, a season ticket base. It's also a place that people come already for entertainment and nightlife. Could you do something in Scottsdale? And when I was there, even two, three months ago, two plus months ago, I could already see a huge boom in construction and projects and things going on in Scottsdale. Like they are ready to move. They are ready to activate. Could you get something done in Scottsdale? Because to be honest, I think Scottsdale is better than Phoenix, like Phoenix proper. I think it's way better than Glendale. No question about that. It might even be better than Tempe. And I think Tempe was already a pretty good spot. So I... I'm here to say that sometimes like, well, there's no other option. There's no better place. Well, I can think of a better place. The question is, is it on the table? Is it even a possibility? But I wanted to throw that out there from my perspective. Let me also say that projects like this, 46 acres, the two hotels, the 2000 residential units, like I've seen this before. I've seen this in Oakland with the A's and Howard Terminal and what they projected. And I don't think that one was oversized. I mean, all these projects are kind of like a cookie cutter thing now. Here's the stadium. Here's something else adjacent to it. I think there was a concert venue also planned here in Tempe. But here's all these things and they, the packages all look the same and it's going to cost one point something billion dollars. But projects like this sometimes just seem so inflated. And it's hard to nail down that entire big project all from the start all at once. Now, in the case of Oakland, I digress. This video is, is not about that, but like things got pretty far and pretty squared away without Oakland public money going towards it. Now we see the A's in Las Vegas going from ambitions of a 55-acre site to a 49-acre site to a nine-acre sliver of land behind the Tropicana Hotel. But here are the Coyotes, right, who wanted this big project, the arena, another venue. 2,000 units. And this is hard to nail down so much land, so much money, so much infrastructure, so much requirements, and so much public money. I bet you, in reverse, if this project were just about building an arena and a parking lot surrounding it for right now, it would pass. But maybe it financially isn't viable because maybe you need some of that other stuff. Well, do you need all of that other stuff? And I'm, I, look, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just stating the obvious here. When you look at some of these things, like these big, huge puzzle pieces with a bunch of jagged edges, they're hard to fit in a lot of metropolitan puzzles, whether it's a city, a county, a state, whatever entity it is, it's hard to get these huge projects done. And especially when public money gets involved, no question about that. And then relocation versus plan B. Like the one thing here with the Coyotes is that you've already had the NHL support for so many years. In fact, the NHL actually owned this team for, for a bit of time. And then they tried to find another, another owner. They did. It, that one didn't turn out. So they found another owner. But the NHL has backed Arizona so long in trying to keep this team where they're at. I'm wondering now if the results of that vote have made Gary Bettman and company a bit remorseful. And to the point where they're going to say, all right, we're going to get revenge on you because now we're going to shop you around. We're going to drag you through the mud to Houston. We're going to see if Salt Lake, Salt Lake City is interested. How about Quebec? All that stuff is now likely to happen. And I'm not saying it because I know. I'm saying it because I would expect that to happen for leverage and other purposes to see what else springs up in Arizona. So, I mean, yeah, you've got these other options. And I'll tell you this, Houston doesn't get talked about a lot but that might be the most that might be the most turnkey market uh, and I know Canadians would love Quebec City and I, I understand the history of the Coyotes franchise in in total and being north of the border before this but um, I think Houston might like might be the most ready opportunity at this point there's some arena and things to figure out there but but I hate this conversation I really hate even going down this road 
a public referendum vote happened on a new arena. They couldn't pass it. They're at this temporary home. They're stuck in the middle. But like everybody wants to panic and rush and get this, you know, squared away, at least in the NHL. There's not some imminent thought of expanding teams. They just expanded. Las Vegas was 31, Seattle's 32 teams. I don't know that the NHL needs to get to 34 or 5 or 6 anytime soon. Like baseball has already said, hey, Oakland A's, Tampa Rays, you're on the clock. Get it figured out. And that's, I don't, fair or not, that puts a lot of un, unfortunate pressure on Tampa and, oh, I should say, St. Pete and Oakland. But in this case, at least there's no external pressure. Like beyond not making enough money with attendance and, and their arena, what is the life-pressing urge to, to get the Coyotes in a different venue? If you take an extra year or two there, there you might be able to save the team in Arizona. So, again, I, I just feel awful. Um, I look at what could have been. I hate seeing this, renderings of, of things that don't get built. But, again, I'm not somebody from Tempe. It's not my place to, to cast my vote here on a YouTube channel. Um, I'm just saying I don't know how when, when things play out, they get messy. Could it have been more simple to understand? Should the league and the team have already had a plan B in place? I mean, they've known this vote was coming for months, and I had a feeling that they knew it was not a certainty at all that they would be favorable in the decision. So what is their plan B? It kind of seems like immediately after last night, the NHL and the team didn't have one. Uh, but hopefully they can, because like I said, number one right now for me is the fan base. I feel you right now. And the difference, by the way, between sympathy and empathy goes like this. Sympathy is I feel pity for you, which I do. But empathy is I understand how you feel because I feel the same way too. Thanks for watching here all the way to the end of the video. Thumbs up since you made it to the end. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel so that I can see you next time.